Vision is my family. They are my extended family. They are some of the most beautiful people that I know. We have become so close. Um, in 1992, 93, somewhere around that, that time, God began to really direct me to form another group. Um, Smallwood Singers had been together probably about 20 years. Um, almost probably. And uh, God was just directing me to go to a different level and to do something new. And of course, change is always difficult. And it wasn't something that I was really comfortable in. It, was, and it, was, it wasn't something that I was really uh, excited in the beginning about doing because I was a little nervous because people knew me from the small ensemble, the small wood singers. I was like, well, what are they going to think if, if I get like a small choir or, or a larger ensemble on stage? But he kept um, laying it on my heart. And uh, in 95, when I signed with Verity Records, um, I decided the first project I wanted to do was going to be this choir project. Uh, and I didn't know that it was going to be an ongoing thing. I thought I was just going to do like a choir project for this particular CD, and that was going to be it. And then I'd do something else the next. I, I didn't know God was really establishing a serious ministry here. And I remember sitting down in my den, and God began to dictate everybody he wanted in the group. A lot of people think that Vision is like a community choir where I have auditions. It's not that way at all. It's like these are people that God laid on my heart. Some I knew. Some were part of the Smallwood Singers. Some were part of my home church, Metropolitan Baptist Church, where the Dr. Reverend, Dr. Reverend H. Beecher Hicks is the pastor. Um, some of them were part of that organization. Some of them I knew of but hadn't really worked with. Some of them I knew since they were kids and I'd watched them like growing up and singing. But he just began to dictate who it was that he wanted to part. And I wrote it down and I just began to call folk. Those numbers I didn't get, I called folk who had the numbers and got them. And people's response were, when is rehearsal? We'll be there tonight. And from the moment that they got there, it was like they had been singing together forever. I don't want it to get any larger, um, and this is who Vision is. People always ask, you know, you're looking for singers, and I, I appreciate their interest and everything, but no, this is, this is who God gave me. Stephen Ford is one of the most gifted, humble, talented, wonderful people that you ever want to meet. Stephen um, played for me for a number of years in the early beginnings of the Smallwood Singers. In fact, the Textures Project, which the original Jesus You the Center of My Joy is a part of, uh, Stephen is playing organ on that. Uh, we traveled all over the country together. Uh, and um, he has blossomed into a great producer, great producer. So when I was looking for someone to sort of help me in terms of the whole production end of it, uh, my manager, Roger, mentioned Stevie, and I was like, it couldn't be anybody else but Stevie. Not only because he's such a great person and because he's so knowledgeable, but he knows my music. And I think that's important in terms of if you're co-producing or if someone's just producing you by themselves, they really need to know the artist. They need to know the music. They need to know the heart of the artist, where they're coming from, because they have to capture that, you know, on, on, on CD, you know. And so uh, Steve has worked with me on all of the vision projects, the, all the live vision projects, Adoration, Healing, and of course, um, um, Persuaded. And he's, he's just, he's a joy to work with. I must say about my band, they were just absolutely awesome. Absolutely awesome. Of course, Stephen Ford on, on organ. Um, Tony Walker, who's a part of, of Vision, who is undoubtedly one of the baddest keyboard players around. Uh, Bryant Pugh, who's another one of the baddest keyboard players around, who's been with me at least 13 or 14 years as, as, as my main keyboard player. Uh, Mark Walker on bass, who's just absolutely phenomenal. Just quiet, you never know Mark was so bad until he gets on the bass. He's just, he's a wonderful guy. Um, Jonathan DuBose, who's got to be the baddest guitar player anywhere. He's been on 
eight of my projects. And I always say, Jonathan, I'm not going to do a project unless you're on it, you know, playing guitar. Also brought in Warren Jones, who's a new, young, talented uh, musician who played drums on a couple of the tracks, um, who also was on the road with me. The main drummer for the session was, was Jeff Davis. Jeff played for the Smallwood Singers and went on the road with me during the time that Steven was with me. So Jeff knows my music too. So, uh, you know, it was just, it was like a family reunion. And last but not uh, least, another talented guy from the Washington, D.C. area, Brother Michael Pugh, who was also a phenomenal bass player as well as a lead guitar player. He did some of the bass work that night as well. So we just had, uh, and then I had Mo Horns, which are the baddest horn players any, anywhere around. Uh, Brother James Cheeks and Brother Courtney Nero and all the guys, and they came in and they've been on my last two projects as well. And uh, they worked with uh, John P. and, and James Hall and uh, T.D. Jakes and Fred Hammond. So they're really a, a very uh, uh, capable and anointed and gifted group of horn players. In high school, I went to McKinley High School here in Washington, D.C., which at the time uh, had a program where you could major in different um, um, courses like you could you could major in art you could major in music if you were interested in going into the medical field in college you could um, major in laboratory techniques so I was a music major at McKinley where you got theory harmony history of music the whole the whole thing so I still had uh, people around me in terms of my peers who were interested in the same things that I was and of course my teachers always encouraged me my eighth grade music teacher was Roberta Flack uh, at Brown Junior High here in, in, in D.C. And, and she was like, you know, Richard, come on, let me show you these chords and stuff like that. So my teachers always uh, encouraged me. It was music all the time. I, I was an only child, so um, it's not like I had siblings to play with. So my time was basically spent uh, playing music, listening to recordings. I remember uh, standing in front of a mirror when I was probably five or six years old and putting on a recording, pretending like I was the artist on the recording and imagining that I was singing in front of thousands and thousands of people. I never wanted to do anything else. My parents were, were, were certainly not well off uh, and they sacrificed for me to go to college. They sacrificed for me to take piano lessons. They brought me a piano when I was probably five or six years old. I, see, I started, they recognized my mom says when I was an infant in the crib, uh, before I could talk or walk, she was uh, standing at the crib and she heard me humming. And so it sort of <laughs> frightened her. So she told my father and he was like, oh, you know, you're really tripping. This is a baby. He might be saying goo goo and gaga, but he is certainly not humming, you know. And she said, you know, he really is. And she, whatever song, that they would hear what they would sing that morning at service on Sunday mornings when they bring me home and put me in the crib I'd start humming it and one day uh, my father um, stumbled in on me on the middle of one of my concerts in my crib <laughs> and he ran to my mom and said you're right you're right so they got me a toy piano uh, a little blue toy baby grand piano and I would bang the rhythms out on the piano and I'd hum until I got to the point where I was walking, I could sit up at my father's piano and I began to pick out the melodies on the keys and then pick out harmonies and so on and so on until, and even before, and probably around that time, he began to take me out, my father did, who was a minister, and um, I would sing before he would preach. He'd set me up on the table or something where they could see me and I would sing, he would play and I would, and, and then he would, do the sermon. Uh, and then by the time I was seven years old, I was playing for his church, um, playing for the senior choir at, at, at my dad's church. So, you know, they recognized that I had a love for music and a gift at a very early age. So they, you know, they encouraged it uh, and went without so that I could get the education and the training that, um, that I could, that I needed.